It's the market. Yo, what's good, everybody? Y'all already know it's another boardroom interview. And who do I have along with me tonight? Yes, folks, tonight. Who do I have with me? Are we rolling again? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Oh, she a problem. See, she wanted to give me a problem. See, 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 so what's up, ma'am? Who are you, ma'am? Right, my name is Janae Fredu, but you can call me Bunny. I'm the exotic dancer. That is my dancer name. Oh, you say it loud. You say it proud. Yeah, Where are you from? Name? I'm from Kansas. What? I've actually been in Georgia for 13 years, so I'm actually a peach now, but Kansas is my hometown. Do you miss it? No, I don't. I don't miss it. What was life growing up? What was life like growing up in Kansas? I would say that Kansas was very country. Um, it was mostly Hispanic, Latino, and black people there. So it wasn't much diversity. But I would say that schools were better down there. But other than that, um, there wasn't much to do there. Um, yeah, it was not much to do there at all. Did it cause you to like get involved with things that you probably shouldn't have been involved with? Yeah. Due to the the boredom. I would definitely say I got into some trouble um, at a young age. Yes. Yeah. What kind of stuff? Like, I mean, you don't got to tell us everything, but I mean, I'm open. You ever stole a car or something like that? Uh, you look like a I car thief. Shoplift. Oh, see, I knew you had something to do with stealing. You look in your eyes, man. I mean, I'm not a thief, but mm -hmm. I would say yeah, I did. I shoplifted, <laughs> and I was in jail for about two weeks because my parents said leave her in there. Yeah, they ain't signing her out. Um, and I learned my lesson. But when I came out at the end of two weeks, um, I was on the plane here. So. Oh, you said you said forget that. I'm out of here. Well, have you have you have you lived in any other places like besides Kansas and Georgia? No, I have not. Um, I have not been blessed to travel as much. So, yeah, Atlanta and Kansas is all I know. So tell me about your life growing up in Atlanta since you're official peach. Like you know, has it been easy? Um, it has not been easy. I would say um our was raised on the east side of Atlanta the whole time. I'm a bounced around from Stone Mountain to Lithonia. Um, and now I'm back in Stone Mountain. I bought a house over there earlier this year. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, I used my stripper money to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like the transparency. I like it. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially why I became a dancer because I wanted to save up to buy land. Yeah, and fund my businesses. So why did why did you actually get into stripping? I would say after I graduated college, I was always approached by promoters. They were like, "You're pretty, you know, you should be a dancer." And I'm like, "You know, I didn't want to be a dancer at first, um, but why go to the club and shake ass for free? Can I curse?" You can say whatever you like. <laughs> you can say whatever you like. Whatever I like. <laughs> yeah, so. Damn, what was we talking about? Why did you become a dancer? Yeah, so I would definitely say that um, I was persuaded. I was definitely persuaded. And the money that I made the first night I started dancing kind of kept me in it. So. Yeah, I was linked up with a homegirl I met on Facebook, and she essentially kind of brought me into the stripper world. And from there, it's been quite a ride, I would say. So the money's pretty good, I guess. I mean, you brought the house. The money's great. So yeah. The money's great. Um, What's the busiest night for you? I would say that it, it, it definitely depends because I kind of operate off booking, so... When I get booked to dance at places, it kind of varies throughout the week, and my money does vary per day. 
I would say when I was working um, like house parties and in the club, um, I would definitely say that Fridays and Saturdays were the most popping days. Like people, yeah. So do you? Check. Which one do you like more? Do you like like the the private or do you like the club? It depends. I would say. Do you mean like private dances or private events? Like, like do you? Yeah, like do you like dancing like at private parties or anywhere like not the club or yeah. do you like the club better? I prefer private parties and events, and yeah, I definitely prefer those because I get paid a little bit more, and I learned that working in the club, the promoters were kind of janky, and they only wanted our money. And they weren't looking out for us, so I kind of stopped working in the club unless I got booked to be there. So when you say looking out for y'all, are uh, you mean like like in the case that you might be in danger, or do yeah. you mean like financially? I would definitely say both. Um, yeah, I would definitely say both. When a promoter is asking you to come dance at their parties, we are as strippers trying to come someplace where security is provided, where we're looked out for, where if um, a client goes too far, you know, security takes care of that, you know, but a lot of the times that doesn't happen. A lot yeah. of the times the promoters kind of side with the customers or they'll just not care about, you know, what we have going on. All they kind of care about is what money they can make off of us. Oh yeah, with that said, I would, I would, I would probably enjoy the private parties better too. Yeah, they are better because I get a certain amount up front and then a certain amount when I get there and then when I leave. So it's only one for me. So, so I stop doing clubs. What is your weirdest experience dealing with a client? No hose bars. Don't spare them. I can't even tell you a specific instance because everything <laughs> that I can think of is bizarre. I would say the most bizarre place I've ever danced at is Tokyo Valentino downtown. Um, oh, some bizarre wow. things happened there. I just saw that spot this weekend. Yeah, it's a lot going on with them right it's now. It's a lot going on over there. A lot. A lot. I actually used to dance there, um, me and a group of friends that I would love to shout out eventually. but. Uh, <laughs> We used to dance there, and there was a lot behind of behind the scenes things going on, from the owner being very racist to them not being transparent about what money they're taking in. Um, yeah, it, it was a lot of fights. Security was wasn't always accurate um, in their findings between dancers and clients. Um, yeah, it was a very weird experience there. I would definitely say um, I've seen a lot. <laughs> so it looks like to me like yeah. you kind of like, you know what I mean? You do it because, you know, it makes pretty good money. Or is there any part of it that you truly love? Like, that, like, you know. I would say I only love what I do when I'm going to an event that I really want to go to. Um, a lot of the times I get booked to like do celebrity events and stuff and I love those because I can network, um, it's a lot of exposure and I mean it's more secure to me. It's not as janky as going, you know, to a club, you know, down the street. But I would definitely say um that's that's what I love, meeting the people that I meet. I always wonder about like y'all willpower. Have you ever like met a client that you you lost all your willpower, like, or is it always willpower all the time? Or have you ever met a client like, man, man, this, this, this dude is pretty decent, right? <laughs> have, you know, I mean, it's not something you're looking for, but it just be like, have it ever just hit you off guard, like, damn. Like, no, I actually have not. Um, I don't typically get involved with my clients. Um, it's usually... I always tell them I'm selling a fantasy. I mean, that's what you're paying for, essentially, you know? Yeah. So I try not to get too intimate with clients. So, yeah. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I haven't gotten that far. What would you tell a, a little girl right now that looks up to you? What would you tell her about life that 
you know, what, what would you warn her about in life from what you have learned thus far in your life? Because you look like you're like 12, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually 24. So I'll oh, be 25 oh, the day after Christmas. 12 and 12 is 24. I'm really not doing <laughs> math, but I got that one right. I'm pretty sure. It's the pixels. <laughs> it's the pixels. Um, I would give that little girl the... I would say that living life to the fullest, doing what you want to do. Um, if you speak it, do it. Um, if whatever, whatever the fuck you want to do. I mean, I wouldn't say that's a little girl, of course, but um, yeah, I would. I would definitely say just navigate life, living your purpose, living, living how you want to live, do what you want to do. Mm. That's how I live. <laughs> What are some of the other things you enjoy um, in your spare time? Well, I'm a big time geek. Um, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I am a geek. Um, I love anything Marvel, DC. Um, I love puzzles. I'm actually in the process of completing a thousand piece puzzle right now in my living room. It's taking me like three weeks, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a big time nerd. I also um, have a job in corporate America. I'm not going to say where, but yeah, I do have a job um, in accounting. And other than that, I kind of dip and dabble in different business ventures. I have a lot of things coming up. Um, I'm actually working on a TV show right now and um, working with a network that's fairly new. Um, and then I'm actually working on a, a, another couple of projects to put on TV, and I'm trying to find networks for those. So I think I got off track. Well, you know, it's cool. You know, hit, hit us up. You know what I'm saying? We got we got the networks over here too. So you know, you can network, network, yeah, the network. I have so many ideas that I mean, I don't care which network I go to. Um, I know the Dosh Network, Ray J's Network, is actually um, one of whom I'm trying to partner with, with my first project, which I'm not going to kind of talk about until it's set in stone, but um, it is going to be based around strippers in Atlanta and helping them develop their um, persona, their techniques, um, their looks in a sort of boot camp. And that's the kind of show that's going to be. <laughs> Are we high? Yeah, I'm very I think, high. I think so. I think, <laughs> I think, I'm a I think, I think we're high because I, I, I just, I just popped me a, um, a gummy in my mouth just now. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know I smoke every day. So. What are, so what are your other talents? Um, I would say I'm also a singer. I've been singing what? since I was little. Um, Kansas, I was in the church choir. Um, I was in choir in middle school, high school, um, up until I graduated. Um, I'm actually going to release an EP. Um, I'm looking to do that next year um, and work, try to find a producer that can produce my music. But I've been working on just trying to get something together for my EP. You seem like you got a lot of, like your head is on your shoulders. You, you seem like a real cool person. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Capricorn. Oh my God! This it's interview's over. What? You're my Capricorn. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Shout out to my mom. It's the Shout January one. Shout out to my mom. It's the Shout January ones. That's the problem. The December ones are good. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> my mom's birthday is after Christmas. The day after Christmas. That's my birthday. What? Yeah. So you're like my mom. Like I'm talking to my mom right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would mean, say that my my boyfriend definitely says that all the time. Like he's talking to his mom, but he's also a Capricorn, so <laughs> <laughs> two Capricorns, oh my god. Yeah. Do y'all argue a lot? Oh um, no, actually we don't. It'd be like mad business, like as soon as you wake up in the morning, well, I, mean, I moved the money to this so. account and then the money was is in this account now. I'm like who took the thirty dollars out of the account? Why does stuff keep coming out? Like, no, yeah. that's that's a married couple. I don't want that. <laughs> we live separate lives. But, okay. Um, no, um, we don't fight a lot. I mean, we typically have the same mindset since we are kind of the same sign. We're typically the same person. Um, so yeah, I let him do his business and I do mine. I'm so busy all the time. 
you know. Is there anything that is there anything that you want to share with with me and the people that might be coming up or like a topic that's been really bothering you and you want to dig into? Is there is there anything like that going on right now? Um, no, I don't have any topics. Did you get the free money from Biden? What free money? Mm. I mean, I know that he said there was supposed to be another stimulus, but what free money? I think he gave every. I think he gave everybody like three fifty or something like that. I'm not really sure. I don't have all my details intact, but I actually hope I didn't get that. So I'm claiming on my taxes in 2023. I think it's something like you could just sign up for and then give them something, and then they give you a code or something, and they, like real for real, for real, for real. I ain't never heard of that. I think it's like three fifty. I think it's something that he's probably trying to watch to see what people spend their money on or something. Yeah. Most I likely, I might just claim it on my taxes like I did the stimulus checks because I didn't get those because I was in college. So, mm. yeah, even when I was in graduate school, I couldn't qualify. Like, you know what? I, did, I couldn't even get the um, PPP or none of that. They told <laughs> me that <laughs> they told me my business, it, they had no proof of it being legit. What? And it's crazy because my business is like seven years old. But I found out some things. I found out some things. Some things that was going on. That makes on. no sense because people that didn't have legit didn't business even have business. Did. What did you? What, why you think I was so motivated? I'm like, I got everything. <laughs> I got the paperwork. I got the, what you need. Right. So it it was some bullshit. But you know, yeah. it got settled. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you gotta watch your circle, man, before they hurt you, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody should let me know. <laughs> For real, like I'm gonna look into that. I think it's like three fifty or something like that. It's virtual, so it's not like a physical. It's like a card, a virtual card, and you can use it to spend, you know, on whatever. Mhm. Mm oh, that's, that's what everybody's talking about the the card. Yeah. Mhm. Mm I'm gonna just claim it on my taxes. I ain't mad. You, I mean, much to you, even you, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, it's three fifty. You know, come on, like. I know you see more than three. Nah, I like I like it. I like it. <laughs> talk, talk that shit. I, I like just that rather shit. claim it on my taxes. You know, it's just easier. Hell yeah. yeah, hell yeah. You do taxes? Yeah, I've done my own taxes. I'm an accountant. Right. So that is that a service that you offer people? Yeah. All right, y'all heard of you know hit yeah. hit her up for taxes, nigga. Not not the. <laughs> Calm down, nigga. Like, she just trying to do some taxes. Like, chill out. I do a lot. I'm the jack of all trades. What so. What's all the things you do? Well, I also own a vending machine business. Ding! I'm actually working on getting a couple of um, snack machines and a couple of drink machines Ding. and combo machines. Ding! Um, I've got my investors, so I'm trying to get the machines in order and secure those contracts. Must be easy to find an investor these days. Oh, I, I have friends in high places, you know, being a stripper. I <laughs> tell, hey, I, I didn't want to say it. I want to, you know, you put the two pigtails in the hair, you know, it's top of Not necessarily that, but real investors, real investors, <laughs> um, real time. But also, um, as I stated earlier, I have the projects with the TV shows coming out. Um, I'm actually working on an OnlyFans page. I know I've been getting a lot of people asking me for content, and I'm officially doing it. Um, I'm starting my OnlyFans next year in 2023. Oh, she gonna start next year. Y'all can't even get it this year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I want to get all my projects together and then start it. So it's just easier to do it that way. Um, but yes, yeah, my biggest project right now is getting those TV shows up. My mom is actually working on a TV show as well that I'm going to be an executive producer on. Um, it's called Counting 40. Um, she's looking to get picked up by WeTV right now, so cross your fingers on that. But um, yeah, big, on those big things, big things. Y'all <laughs> see the people I know, man. Y'all see the people? that's what hey, that's what this show is all about. This show, I've been using this show really. I know a lot of people that you know, like you, you know what I'm saying, and like me, you know, and. The question is always like, yo, who do you know? You know what I'm saying? So this was a better way for me to show it. You know what I'm saying? And now now they can know you too. And that's how it goes. Shit. This hand is like... <laughs> I made my drink perfect. How your drink going over there? Yeah, it's... it's I ain't see you stare at nothing. Like, you no, know. I stare at it. You know? yeah. I'm a sipper. I don't, you know, I don't go... So, what's your favorite color? 
magenta. That's like it looked pink, right? A little it's bit. It's a mix between pink and purple. Okay, I got the okay. I got a jacket coming out. I want you to model for me, please. Yes, I, I love oh. magenta. Yeah, I can keep it too. Like, okay. <laughs> it because it's possible. It's possible. It's, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Look, if it's for sale, I'll take it. If it's not, I'll take it too. It's, it's the fun. dream house, you know. What I mean? So anything Look, is possible. I love magenta though. That's my favorite color. Yeah. What's your favorite food? Dang, what is my favorite food? I'll say pizza. I'm basically. What? Same yeah. here, man. I'm pizza. And I hate condiments. On a pizza or period? I just hate condiments. Like ketchup and stuff? Yeah. Why? It's random, but I just don't. I don't like You condiments. gotta have, you need con. Okay. What? Top fries. Nothing. Top five fry, french fries. None? Nothing. Who got the top, top five french fries? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I would say Wendy's has... The second best. I'm about to pass out. I, this I like the fries. Windows, you don't like the fries? I can't. When they're fresh? I, when I'm, they actually change the oil. You know? If I'm hungry and they fresh, yeah, I might tear it up. <laughs> but I feel like fries is the worst thing that ever happened to Wendy's. Um, I'm pretty sure there's other things that happened to <laughs> That was the worst thing that happened to Wendy's. Um, dang. So who do you think is the top? I'm going to go with... And this is not in that order, but it's yeah. just they just in the five. I'ma say McDonald's. Ew, you think they have the best fries? Fresh McDonald's fries from the hood with a so lot of processed. salt on it? Their fries are so processed. Super processed. Have you ever had it fresh with with, 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 <laughs> with the proper amount of salt? I don't like McDonald's. So. Okay, 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 okay. Chick-fil-A. That's debatable. Not when you put the ranch and the ketchup on it. Oh, Not but ranch. you don't like condiments. Not ranch. I like barbecue sauce. That might barbecue sauce and hot sauce are like the only thing I can tolerate. You gotta put you gotta try the ranch on I'm telling you, it would change your world. You gotta try the ranch and the ketchup on Chick-fil-A. Oh, it's put it on Chick-fil-A fries. I think it's just made for I mean, I think made like for fries. fries. I was saying fast food. Yeah. So I'll get I'll, hmm, you know, I'll give you that. You know my five guys? I'll get I, Have you had um Wahlburger? I had a yo. co-worker take me there the other like I want to say a few weeks back because I work over by the battery. It's one here? Yeah, over by the battery. Well at the battery. See, I usually go there when I'm in El Paso, yo, and I usually <laughs> drunk. So I'll be tearing you know, it up. Mark Wahlberg's. Yeah. Right. yeah, I yeah. didn't know that. I went in there. I'm like, why is it mall work? Why is he all over the place? And they were like, this is his restaurant. I was like, I was wondering why. I thought y'all were just a cult or something. Like, y'all were just big fans of him or something. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh, the name. Mall Burger. Yeah. I'll be hot. It makes sense. Yeah. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you was able to put that together. Like, damn. I mean, it had some good ass burgers too. I ain't gonna flex. Man, that shit. Like, I'm going to say, like, years ago, like, when I was, on, um, when I first got to El Paso, the first time I was over there, I was training to go to Iraq. That shit was disgusting. But when I came back, like, I, my manager and stuff is there, so I go there for, like, press runs and stuff now. Mm -hmm. And they taste way better now. But I usually, yeah. I'm usually drink, I'm usually eating it late at night when I'm drunk, like, right before I go, <laughs> go to, That's to the That's the best crib. time. Yeah. Drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's go there. Yes, yes. I'll be tearing that shit up, man. Mm, thinking about it right now. <laughs> I didn't know they had one here. Damn, but I wouldn't drive down there for it. Yeah, I haven't been nowhere else where they've had a wall burger. I don't really travel much. Who you think got the best burger? Ooh, that's so debatable. Okay, how that's do you so feel good. about cookout? Cookout versus five guys. Let's go. Uh, Cookout versus five guys. That's a I would good say one. Cookout is good when they cook it right, but they give you way more on a platter. Five guys is very expensive. You get nothing really, but you know. And I think don't even. I think you have to pay for the drink too at Five Guys. Like I don't even think that their meals come with a drink, and it's already seven, eight dollars. Yeah, when you can go to cookout for six dollars, get a big ass tray full of shit. Like, have you ever tasted Hardee's? 
Hardee's. My dad and my mom love Hardee's. Um, now, Hardee, I believe Hardee's is like the no. real deal. That's for the people with a little money. Hear me out. Okay. Sonic. I'm gonna feel you on that one. They beef is real. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I cannot play Sonic. I'm not gonna play Sonic. Yeah, I'm don't a, I play feel Sonic. You on I feel you on that. I feel like people have been sleeping on them, mm -hmm. and that's why they kind of going out business. But you know, sleeping here right there. Sonic is good. Sonic is good. Like a nice summer night. You want to take a ride? Pull up. Pull up to Sonic's on the outside. Some places have You can't do that no more. You gotta drive through. You gotta go through the drive through now. Oh, like, for real? Yeah, ever since COVID, they haven't had it to where you can just pull up. So I see everybody's riding that COVID train still. That's crazy to me. Hey, some of some of these businesses still got like, you know, I ain't mad at them. You know what though? What I what I will say is since COVID, I seen businesses do smarter shit. Yeah. And it's like, you should have been doing shit. that stupid. More technological efficient. Yeah. Like, the curbside pickup was genius. I don't go inside nowhere anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, when I grocery shop, I don't go inside. I just pick up. The next game. See, they should have realized, like, <laughs> oh, man, they coming for you? Are they coming? They not. They, 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 no, they not. You might have to take that straw out, though. What, this? Yeah. Yeah, because you leaving a little, little opening in there. But. But yeah, man. Um, so fashion wise, are you into fashion? Not really. What are you I into? What are you into? I would say clothing wise. I mean, I'm not really into clothes. Like, is it video I games? I like accessories. accessories. I would say I love accessories. Like, you see me with my bunny shit on, you know. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I like I like rings. I like accessories. I'm not really a fashion person. Um, I will say I'm very particular about my shoes and my purses. My purses have to be name brand because mm. they just last longer. Yeah, it's not that quality. I'm like, I'm, I'm really not, you know, into branding or, you know, it has to be expensive. You know, I shop on Shein like every other girl, mm -hmm. but, um, my purses have to be more durable. All my belts, my belts have to be name brand because those last longer as well. Um, that's about it. I mean, I don't really spend my money on you know um material yeah yeah i i i will make sure i give you i you 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 know with this interview comes a, a 10 percent off um ticket to bliss beauty supply mm -hmm. and it's a lifetime so it's like you don't just use it once you can use it like every time you shop Okay. So everything is at Bliss. That's yours, right? Yes. Of shameless plug. Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> uh, duh. But Bliss Beauty Supply. You want not... something funny? What? What's funny? I actually wanted to open up my own beauty supply store. Mm. <laughs> but that was like a long dream that I had before. I wanted to do like a beauty supply store. And I wanted to do um, like a nail shop with like all the things that girls will want. Like waxes, um, hair done, get your nails done. Um, like everything in one, like everything you can do as a girl. <laughs> Shit, like I want to make those things. I mean, I still want to do them, of course, but yeah, I kind of wanted my lingerie store first, but that's neither here nor there. And you can also sell your lingerie at Bliss Beauty. <laughs> I'm not playing with y'all, man. <laughs> No, you gotta promote yourself. You got to. And nah. like, I will start reposting your stuff too. No, nah, I'm just saying, okay, look. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you like accessories. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. Bliss Beauty Supply not I only has beauty supplies, but also clothing, I support. accessories, all that great stuff. I support everybody's businesses. If I need it, I'm going to support it. You know? So, if you, if you can tell, well, I asked you that. But I would like to know what experience, what's a memorable experience or a memorable lesson that you've learned as a kid that you still carry with you today? Um, I would say that my parents kind of enforced the idea of like saving and um, being financi financially literate. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it kind of carried into my adulthood because I'm very frugal. As I said, I don't spend my money on a lot of um, things I don't need, a lot of things that cost 
too much um, only because I'm saving for bigger things that's gonna make more money um, mm -hmm. I would say I'm glad I learned that lesson because a lot of people here um, kind of materialize things and I would say that's the biggest lesson I've learned not to materialize things um, rather than taking an object for value just take whatever you can get for value that's why I invested in my house because um, now I have equity you know rather than clothes or shoes or purses do you feel like um as the the African American culture you are African American I am mixed up I am Creole oh yeah I'm Japanese okay <laughs> I'm mixed up <laughs> okay so do you feel like you know how they have like They'll say like a white man could be rich and driving a Honda and some beat up shoes and all that great stuff. And he'll still get like the utmost respect. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's the same way for black people? Like a successful black person, do you feel like they can drive a Honda, have beat up shoes and get the most utmost respect from their peers? I feel like the black community kind of... Um I feel like they associate um, success with material things. Yes. Um, a lot of the time they say, you know, you have to have brand name everything. I remember when I was growing up in school here, um, if you didn't have the latest or whatever may have you, you were kind of like nothing, you know, or you were lame. But I would definitely say in the black community, we are very guilty of... Um, associating success with material um things which is very bad <laughs> it's bad because it's very bad it's it's stuff that i don't even think that we could fix it's, i think it's like so embedded so it's like i go through it as well you know what i'm saying even you know i like on a regular day i like to put on sweatpants and some right. shoes some sneakers it might have pain on it because when I'm like in the building, I might just start painting. Like, you know, I'm always prepared for that. I ain't really trying to be around people and shit. But mm -hmm. if somebody happened to pop up, you know what I mean? They act like motherfuckers supposed to have his chains, all his chains, his Versace and all that shit. Yeah, while he's supposed sick. to be stripped out every yeah. time. Yeah, but yeah. It, and, I, and, and I hate it because like we do that to each other. It sucks, man. Yeah, it's bad. And I personally never... I mean, I never gave into it. I mean, I don't give a fuck about what nobody thinks. I'm going to wear whatever the fuck I'm going to wear, and I still look good. Um, I was actually bullied in high school for that, you know, not looking up to par. So, um, yeah, I mean, you get where you get in life because, I mean, you just got to move smart. So, I mean, a person that has a lot of money versus a person that may flex like they have a lot of money may look a little different. And, yeah, I would say a person with more money they're going to be more frugal. I, I am. <laughs> Whatever money I buy, I set aside and save it. I don't go and buy a big, you know, um, massive amount of materialistic things. I typically just pay my bills first and then save it. I don't even like spending money, to be honest with you. But, I mean, I still look good. <laughs> so, let me ask you. Like, um, so, you go into, you, you, you step into a, a event, right? Mm -hmm. And it's of course guys there. Do you do you already prejudge every guy first, judging by what you see, or do you kind of like fill the room out? Like, and if you do fill the room out, how do you fill it out if you don't prejudge them? So I wouldn't say that I prejudge because you typically can't tell who and who has money and who doesn't because a person could quote unquote look like they have money and not have a dime. Um, I've seen it a lot. I've seen celebrities come empty empty, you know, and they're supposed to be rich, you know. But I don't judge people based off what they look like when I dance. I typically just fill the room out. Um, typically, you can tell who's there to spend money and who's there to not. Um, when you kind of get into the industry a little more and do more events, you kind of know. And typically, I know. I can smell if there's money before I even hit the floor sometimes. I mean, <laughs> it's been my gift. I've gone to a lot of events where there was no money. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave it there, folks. She could smell the money before it hit the floor. <laughs> we going to leave her at that, okay? You can tell, I mean, 
you walking through the door and they're saying there's no money if you don't see the the girl that's already been there with no money in their hands ain't no money you know I mean some of them girls be having bad attitudes and niggas be like man I got like a bag I got two bags full of ones but I don't like these bitches' attitudes, so like yeah, I be spinning shit. I agree, and a lot of times the girls don't have good attitudes. I would say a lot of dancers here are not friendly <laughs> at all. Um, I'm very friendly though. I mean, um, typically I try to make my rounds around, and whoever you know is around is around. Um, I make my money, I make my money, but um, typically, yeah, I would. I hear that a lot from people that attend. You know. Um, strip clubs and what have you say that same thing um that girls have bad attitudes so they don't want to spend money but yeah it was just take somebody like me to just come out and then you know they spend their money <laughs> so tell us where we can find you at i am on instagram um call me underscore 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 three underscores Nay Nay N A Y N A Y. It's on TikTok, on Twitter, um, on Instagram, of course. That's what I just Yeah, those are my socials. Do you want to leave us with any encouraging words before we head out of here? Encouraging. Um, I guess live your life to the fullest because we don't know when the end is coming. Seems like it's a little near, so YOLO. That's all I can say. Well, y'all heard it. <laughs> y'all heard it here, folks. She can smell the money before it hits the floor. If you're a good stripper, you can. Hello. Y'all already know it's the kid face, man. Who else you know bring you strippers that buy houses? What you talking about? She could be your accountant, all right? Stop playing with us, man. Tune in next week to the next episode of Plugged In. Thank you for coming out tonight. 